Hi, John Dalton here with Adams. The most wonderful discovery I've ever made in my life. Okay, I'm born on September 6, 1766, in Eagles Field, Cambria, United Kingdom. I had a great early life, but also quite dreadful at the same time. Both my parents were Quakers, which results to them also being Christian. We're seen as dissenters, we had a different opinion from compared to the majority, by the Church of England, which I felt kind of dumb about. My education opportunities were restricted to dissenting places of education, and my family was really lacking on money. Therefore, I had to earn my living at the age of 10 in the service of a wealthy local Quaker. Then attended at my village's school until 12 years old. When I turned 15, I joined my older brother Jonathan in running a Quaker school in Kendall, West Moland, about 45 miles away from my home and stayed there until 23 to the point of 27. I started teaching mathematics and philosophy at Oxford and made there until 34. Now we're up to the important part, where I discovered the atomic theory. I feel like you need to know a little more about this, of what I discovered. It's very... Here, these are all my claims. One, elements Bruh. are made of extremely small particles called atoms. Two, atoms of a given element are identical in size, mass, and other properties. Atoms of different elements, different size, mass, and other properties. Atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed. Atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds. Five. In chemical reactions, atoms are combined, separated, or rearranged. <sighs> Take a second. Well, why atom in the name? So let's go back to Democritus, where he named it Atomos, and started the atom of all matters are alike, which made me have this idea in the first place. And that's how it came along to my next part of my research. Later, on 6 September 1803, I made the atomic weights. It contains six elements, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus. Finding it could it took quite some time. I had to make a list in my notebook which set out the relative weights of the atoms and the number of elements. And then I analysis it from water, ammonia, carbon dioxide. Just a lot more that I tested, but there's no point to explain all of that. According to the weights, they combine the six masses of each other. The measurement got me to my next step. The law of multiple operations. So here's the idea. If two elements form more than one compound between them, then the ratio of the masses of the second element which combine with the fixed mass of the first element will be ratio of small whole numbers. For examples, I knew that the elements carbon form two oxides but com combining with oxygen in different operations. A fixed mass of carbon, say 100 grams, may react with 133 grams of oxygen to produce one oxide, or with 266 grams of oxygen to produce the other. The ratio of masses of oxygen that can react with 100 grams of a carbon is 266 to 133, which is a 2 to 1 ratio, a ratio of small whole numbers. Well, in the end, this idea wasn't all correct, since there are much limitations of it whenever some numbers are unable to be divided. But my success was way more than what I have failed on. After awards in life, I received the highest honor all, out of all scientists, the royal medal sent by the king himself. At last, I died of old age in July 27th, 1844, fall off my bed. What time did you exactly receive the King's Medal? The time of when I got my Royal Medal is 1826. And yes, I did forget the exact time of when I got it. What exactly is your experiment? My experiment is very simple. You use a glass bottle and a large bowl of water. When the bottle is submerged under water, the water it contains is displaced. But the bottle isn't empty, it's filled with invisible gas hydrogen instead. The amount of pressure exerted by the hydrogen can be identified using a chart that lists the pressure of water vapors at different temperatures.